Um, you were teaching this Sunday, mm -hmm. and you quoted uh, Luke one thirty seven. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, just there was such a powerful anointing mm -hmm. on that statement, especially referring to Jack Taylor, who had yes. just passed away, and you know, this whole idea that we carry or that God has given to us the authority yes. through His Word to actually walk in His power, and we see that obviously in the apostles being sent out in Luke nine. And then we see it in Luke 10, where 70 others were sent out. And in that word sent is literally the word, a variation of the word apostle. They were apostled. And then they come back saying, wow, even demons were subject to us in your name. You know, this, this idea of the kingdom coming, talk about it some more. There's a phrase that was made popular, at least uh, in, in my lifetime, oh, back in the 80s. And it was the kingdom now, but not yet. Yeah. And and it does reveal the tension of, you know, the throne of Jesus isn't set up on earth yet, yeah. you know. So the full realization isn't there, but there's more available than what most people think. Right. And my problem with the statement isn't with the statements with the application yeah. because the not yet becomes the hiding place for unbelief. That's right. It becomes the excuse That's instead right. of learning to do it, what we were taught to do in scripture. Paul taught on the gifts of the spirit then in Chapter 14, 1, he said, pursue. So there has to be, if I can use the term, reckless abandon mm. towards what God has revealed to be his will. Yeah. And when we talk about the kingdom coming on earth, we're just talking about the king having his effect on broken situations. Mm -hmm. We saw it in Jesus' life. What did he do? Every person who came to him left healed. Yeah. Every, every sick person. Right. Everyone the Father directed him to. <laughs> every right. tormented person who came to him. Uh, or, or was in his path as he was, uh, you know, going through his, his journeys. There was deliverance come. So there's the example of what the Father wants. He wants that to happen. And, uh, and so us learning how to walk in his authority, mm -hmm. us learning how to walk in that sense of commission and purpose, that's, that's how it happens, yeah. is through our obedience. Right. And uh, I, like to, I like to put it this way, Jesus Christ is perfect theology. He reveals the Father. Yes. And that's, think about that, the prayer, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Mm. And then it concludes, for yours is the kingdom. Right. So what does it mean? It means kingdom is family. Wow. The kingdom has a, has a Father. Right. And so anytime we're praying for this, we're not just praying for some mysterious influence to invade the room or our city or whatever. We're talking about a Father. Yeah. We're talking about people becoming restored to why they were made in the first place, why they were created, into that relationship with the Father, stepping into all that fathers do. Fathers that are healthy provide so much in a sense of purpose, destiny, uh, yeah. you know, all, all of that. And that's earthly fathers. What about the heavenly father who has no flaws whatsoever? Yeah. You know, so, so it's just an invitation into the fullness of life here and now. It's, it's, it is heaven on earth. I had an interesting experience. I had uh, some of my relatives um, were, were alive during the day of Amy Semple McPherson, and they were involved in, in, in her ministry. In fact, yeah. I had an uncle that was a soloist. Mm -hmm. And I was at a, a um, this is back in the early 90s, I was at a birthday party for uh, one of my relatives, and a group of this very, very elderly 90 plus saints were meeting together at a table mm -hmm. and I just started listening to them eavesdropping and uh, and they started talking about what it was like when the power of God would flow through this servant of the Lord Amy Simple McPherson mm -hmm. and I heard one of them say they were whispering they, it was it was like they didn't want to it yeah. upset anyone one of them leaned over and said it was like heaven on earth wow. that was that was their term wow. that wow. that what would happen was it must have been somewhat similar yeah. to when Jesus walked the earth. Yeah. You can imagine the disciples seeing pe paralyzed people set free and all these things, the joy, the delight, the, the challenge to the brain because the impossible just unfolded again wow. in front of you. That's the kingdom. The kingdom has a father. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it, you know, even that Luke 10 passage where he says, you shall tread on scorpions and serpents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing shall by any means harm you. It's such a counterpoint to that, you know, nothing shall be impossible. Yeah. Like that, that idea of uh, the two going together. Um, kind of to the question of the already not yet, yeah. which I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I was mentored under John Wimber for a season, and that was a favorite phrase of his. Okay. 
but unfortunately it did get used, sort of co-opted to be an excuse. Right, right. Okay, well, we still can now hide in the shadows of doubt and unbelief because yeah. we have the already and not yet reality, okay? Um, and yet at the same time, obviously, this has been a challenging year with the pandemic, the riots, the, you know, the issues related to the you know, polarity in the pol pol political realm. How do you see the manifestation of God's kingdom coming in the midst of these kinds of moments that we're in right now? I mean, because obviously there's a big disparity. So how do you see the inner relationship? In every one of the situations you mentioned, there are miracles of the invasion of the kingdom yeah. in those stories. Yeah. It's not what the media will tell you, right. but there are many who have been healed during this pandemic of the pandemic. Yeah. There are people out of wheelchairs over a Zoom call. <laughs> I mean, the most extraordinary awesome. things are yeah. taking place in, in what is considered the worst of times. Yeah. But in the middle of that, there's the healing of, of racial conflict. There are, yes. there are racists coming together. There is this merging of, of, uh, of hearts in the political arena. All of that's going on at the same time. That's it's right. just, it just doesn't sell newspapers. Exactly. And, uh, and, and so yeah. uh, they set the tone and everybody seems to think that's all that's happening yes. is we've got a pandemic, we've got crisis, we've got riots. Yeah, we do. And we also have the other happening. Right. We, have, we have the absolute miracle of healing in relationships. We have the miracle of healing in people's bodies, churches, ministries, all kinds of things are right in the middle of the fray, right in the middle of the conflict. Yeah. I mean, you know, Sean Foyt and some of those guys went, did, they did water baptism. In fact, his whole ministry did a water baptismal service right where Floyd was, uh, was killed. Right. And uh, just reversing the effects of these things. Right. It doesn't catch the attention of media, which, you know, that's, that's their deal. Exactly. But we have to make sure that we remember in the middle of dark, circumstances, Jesus shows up. Yes. He shows up if he can just find so someone good. that will come into agreement with him yeah. and, and be that person to believe him for the impossible. Then those things are reversed and they're happening all over the country right now. That's so good. Yeah, I mean, those, I mean, just in our own lives, I mean, we're seeing it here. And so it's exciting to see. Now, as you look at the church right now, kind of across the board, and obviously there's highs and lows and things that are going on uh, back and forth. What do you see as maybe two or three of the biggest challenges we're facing right now? Like where should we be sort of laying the ax to the root or, you know, sort of emphasizing aspects of kingdom reality that are not getting as emphasized as they need to be? Like where do you see those places right now? That's, that's a, a huge question. Yeah. Um, all the things you mentioned, yeah. you know, there are solutions and they are happening right now all yeah. through the church but it needs to happen more. Yeah. There needs to be the aggressive pursuit of conversation, of restored relationship. Um, people are afraid to, for example, we have a, you know, in our school of ministry here, we have something like 70 nations. And I, when I talked to them, I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for my country. I yeah. want to be a patriot in the sense that I want to be a supporter of our country, but I want you to do the same for your country. That's I right. want you to have that absolute right. same National pride, if we can use that in a, in a positive sense, I, I want to see that restored because right. we have people just so afraid to, to stand up for anything. That's right. and, uh, and we've got to get that fixed because we've been called, we've been called the head, not the tail. We've yes. been called to take our responsibility and not make it a political issue, make it a kingdom issue. Mm -hmm. and, and get in there and do what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, culture is supposed to matter to us. Yeah. Uh, things that are, are leading people to hell, that's not supposed to be okay on our watch. And, uh, and so there's some of that that needs to, we've, we've got to have courage restored to a whole bunch of people that just lost it in this last season. Yeah. And, uh, and the whole thing of nothing being impossible for God, that, that what I talked about Sunday, that, that whole, the whole issue that God never gives a decree except that he empowers us to carry out what he commanded. Yeah. That whole commission is huge that, that the church returns to that. Yes. That's, that's, what, that's what God assigned us to do. Yeah. He said, as the Father sent me, I send you. Yeah. It couldn't get any clearer. What, <laughs> what, what did Jesus come to do? You know? yes. So um, it, it's just it's simplifying who we are and wh why we're here. And then enjoy the journey. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that occurred to me is like, you know, 
500 years ago, 504 years or three years ago, we had the Protestant Reformation. And there were three truths that seemed to kind of rise above the rest. You know, salvation by faith alone was one of them. The authority of scripture was the next. And the third one that was discovered but never fully implemented was the priesthood of every believer. Um, Obviously, that's a big emphasis of yours. Yeah. You know, you've, I've heard you say we're not here to build a big church, but to build big people. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit in the light of the apostolic calling, that we're called to be spiritual fathers, you know, mothers, raising up sons and daughters into full maturity. How do you see that working, and how can we enhance our ability to really raise up kings and priests in our generation? Government has two basic functions, and I'm going to use the term government when I talk about apostles, prophets, yeah. etc. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if we're talking about the church, or we're talking about nations, or we're talking about mom and dad of a household, a family. Right. Government has two basic roles. One is we rule to protect. Number two, we serve to empower. Yes. And the apostolic has both areas. There is the ruling part. It's not to dominate people. It's, it's as watchmen to make sure that things are remaining healthy and that we mm -hmm. have the courage to address issues that are critical, that keep people in the center of what God is saying, what God is doing. But the other side of that coin is this, we serve. The apostle is not the highest, it's the least. Yeah. And it's at the bottom to empower. It's at the bottom to encourage. Mm -hmm. And that really is the role of of all, of all government. And so uh, the apostolic, whether it's in the miracles, whether it's in a healthy family, whether it's in the, uh, the insights needed for a healthy business or proper ways to educate, whatever it might be that would, that would come up on our radar, the apostolic gift is to empower people to succeed mm -hmm. at what they are called and assigned to do. That's, that's the assignment. That's the assignment, is to serve enabling people to succeed. Wow.